Well, obviously the, the body of the guitar contributes to the tone, the material choices, um, and, and, and of course the, the function of the body, I mean, um, one of the main functions of the body is the, the way, the playability, how it, how it sits on your lap and, and the, the ergonomics of the guitar. And probably the one, the, the only thing that, uh, that I have never 100% liked about Les Paul guitars is the way that, it, way, way that it sits on your lap when you play it. Because it's usually when, when you take the guitar, it feels like it's always like falling there. You know? The dropping is so, so back weight. So, um, again, I wanted this guitar to be very traditional. I didn't want to do anything dramatic to it. But I simply took the waistline slightly down. So what we have is a guitar. Let me demonstrate to you. It's just like that. It doesn't, doesn't drop anywhere. Very good and balanced. <laughs> but I want to drop it. Hey. Well, anyway, you get the point that it's it doesn't it doesn't do the less fault thing. It doesn't drop off. Um, yeah. And one more important feature and faction factor of guitar sounding the way it does is the, is the weight of the guitar. How what, what you know? I'm I'm looking at you know because th these are the things that the what is it about the 1959 burst Les Paul that makes people so crazy about it and the tone of it and and obviously the first things you look at is the how was the guitar made what was the materials that it was made of and the and the and the Les Paul guitar in the 50s was made of uh, Honduran mahogany the body and the neck and Probably one of the reasons why I like that 1957 Les Paul, the gold top that I played as a young kid. I, I, why did I like it so very much was that it was actually a very lightweight guitar. It was um, way under um, four kilos. What is that in pounds? It's eight and three quarters. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, it was a comfortable guitar to hold, and at that point, as a young kid, I didn't, co you know, connect these two things. That it, it's maybe it's maybe that's the tone also, because it didn't sound the same as the newer Les Pauls. The old Les Pauls have a very cool mid range that I love. It's the lower mids and the sort of the muscle that comes out in the famous guitar riffs, like I don't know, All Right, All Right Now by Free or or something like that. I mean, it's just such a cool tone. And I feel that the newer, more heavy Les Pauls don't have that. They are very powerful sounding guitars. They also usually nowadays have more like overwound pickups, which makes them sound very powerful and muscular. But also, to my taste, nowadays the, the Les Paul guitar. This isn't the same. This isn't the guitar that it was designed to be in the, originally. That is available nowadays, and and I wanted to, as said, to get to the essence of it. And a heavyweight guitar usually lacks character. There's the, there's the very simple physical fact of when you have a very dense, heavy piece of wood, and then you have these guitar strings, which aren't so very strong. They, are, they, they aren't capable of doing very much to this solid body slab of wood. Um, you have the heavyweight guitar, and all the work is done by the strings and the pickups, and the guitar doesn't interact. It doesn't, when you're, you know, shouting, it doesn't, Call back, and um, this is why 
probably the lighter weight, less balls that I have played, they 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 feel more responsive. They feel the guitars that when you when you strike a chord, um, you don't need el electricity to do that. You can. The mids are already there, and then, then when you amplify it, it just it, it comes through. It's there, and um, and also about the sustain. It's one of the one of the mids is the sustain of the Les Paul. That it, yeah, it needs to be heavy because it, then it's going to sustain so good. And sure, the the heavy weight Les Paul can sustain good, but they aren't usually the, even the best sustaining guitars. Sustain has got to do with the, very much of the doubling harmonic overtones and, and sort of the guitar interacting as well. So it's, it's not as simple as, thing as, as thinking of the, you know, you, you take a note and, and it plays. When, when you have a responsive guitar, you can have a beautiful, beautiful sustain and a different way of sustain because when you, it's, it's most obvious in the high register if, if the guitar doesn't respond at all, it's just the string and the pickup, the high register is usually quite thin and sort of lacks, lacks power, lacks sort of bottom end of it. And um, for that you need the, the body of the guitar, the whole guitar as a, as a concept to interact and to the overtones to work. So you get a sustaining tone, and the, and the higher notes can be beautiful, velvet, thick, and uh, yeah. We haven't talked about finish as much, and since the time is limited, we're not going to talk about it very much. But the nitrocellulose finish—that's like the um, um, that's the thing that is usually said to be the, you know, you need to cite nitrocellulose to make it good. And uh, where does that come from? It, it's, for me, it's been, I've, I've been building guitars with many different kind of finishes. And I've, during my 15 years of my own guitar building and, and learning from colleagues and friends. And, and uh, in Finland, we have a nice, very nice open atmosphere among the guitar makers. It's probably caused by the school we have because most of us has, have gone through that school and it sort of creates more, um, we want to, want to uh, we've learned that sharing information is not giving away information, it, it, that's not the same thing, it's like uh, by sharing information you're, you're, you know, everybody feels better. <laughs> 